there are probably some people inside his own office that are picking the Eagles to not even make the playoffs. Let's head to the Comcast Business Hotline, where every day in business is a big day. Let Comcast Business help you move forward with what's next. From ESPN, the great Kevin Agandhi joins us. Kevin, first off, sorry for the late text message. That's my bad. <laughs> Second of all, it's all good. why it's all are good. the Eagles being disrespected, if they are in your mind? I, I, I don't know if they're being disrespected, to be honest with you. I'm kind of surprised with the lead-in, uh, Tunis, that uh, suggesting anybody... It, where I work actually thinks they're not going to make the playoffs because everybody I've talked to has talked about them being, whether they're division champs, uh, you know, they're fighting for the conference at the end of the season or potentially Super Bowl bound. I have not heard one person say anything that they're not going to make the playoffs. I think the most they're... damning one was Bill Barnwell, who I think does a tremendous job. And yeah, I, I appreciate his work because even though I might not agree with a lot of the stuff, he at least gives legit reasons, like detailed answers as to why something might happen. And he put out an article a few weeks ago about the five teams that will take a step back this year. And yeah. the Eagles were one of them. And I go, wait a minute, a step back from a team that had a historic collapse and basically only made the playoffs because they had a 10-1 and one start? That, that kind of scares me. Well, I mean, to Bill's point, I'm not going to justify all the arguments he's going to make in this. But to Bill's point, is the last time we saw them, right? So we saw them reeling, right? And that mm-hmm. team that just didn't want to play for the coach in that playoff game, and that coach is back. I, I've never – it's really hard to kind of get a feel for this team until we watch them. And you can't say preseason because preseason is completely different these days. Uh, to really get an idea of what a team's going to be like. Uh, because the minute we thought that they were rolling like they were the first two months, uh, we saw the collapse in the final six, seven, eight games. I, I've never, ever, and John goes uh, with me here when we talk about the history of understanding, and it's not, Tunis, you just got a, the benefit of being younger than us. I have never experienced a collapse like that uh, as a fan, and then the coach is back. Right. I, I can never remember a coach coming back on that talented uh, have a collapse like that and say, yeah, we're going to run it back with this coach. So it's hard to kind of gauge where this team is going to be. And we also know that the role has changed for this coach, right? So I, I, I'm curious to see how this coach handles adversity. We know he's got it down pat when things are going great. How is he going to handle adversity after dealing with it last year the way he did and he didn't handle it well and he's talked about maturity and emotional awareness? And also, guys, like, plain and simple, he's a CEO coach because the power has been given to the coordinators from the top, and you bring in Kellen Moore, you bring in Vic Fangio. So it's a completely different dynamic from the last year or two. I I ask one thing, and and again, I I think I've said this a couple times. This is not Nick Sirianni uh, bashing here. But what does Nick do? A coach on the sidelines for a team that has – championship aspirations what does he do does he make them better and i'm trying to figure out where does nick sirianni find a role to make this team better this season i will tell you this is that i think during games kev i believe it appears that he has had a pretty good feel though about when to go for it when not to go for it things like that um challenges making those decisions whether that's being made by someone's recommendation up in the booth i actually don't feel that bad about him when he's on the sidelines making those kind of calls. It's with yeah. the fact that last year he couldn't stop the plane from crashing and he had a seat in 11C. Like, he just sat there and watched it. Absolutely. And, and, and what does the coach do when you're in a losing streak, right? Like, or, like, things are, you know, changing in the locker room. The dynamic is falling apart. The, the coach has to hold it together, right? Yeah. And, and, the, and the players have to play for the coach. And it just didn't seem like it. it I mean, that Bucks game was a disgrace. They 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 were ready to go. The season was over, and they didn't want to play for the coach anymore. So I'm I'm curious: Do they play for him? Do they play for him during a losing streak? Is there any type of adversity that they're going to face? And I think the first month of football across the board throughout the league will be sloppy because it's going to be preseason, especially the first two games. You're going to see some sloppy football because. Many of these starters don't play now in August, which is justifiable considering it's a 17 game schedule and you don't want to get hurt early on. So I, I'm, I, there's a lot of factors. 
the thing that, that really is interesting for the Eagles more than anything else compared to anybody else is that this first game is in South America. And the second thing is it's not a home game, right? The home environment, I think, would be different against a team like the Packers. You don't have the home field advantage, and you're not even remotely close to being in the country. How do they handle all that? Does that help them? You don't deal with the noise. You can stay focused, stay in your hotel leading up to the game, uh, and you're playing a team that's actually pretty darn good, man. And I know we got a lot of weapons. The secondary for the Packers, they can, they can handle what the Eagles are going to bring. So what are you going to do? Is that, does that mean more carries for 26 early on in Kellen Moore's offense? Kevin, what's your opinion on the game in Sao Paulo? Not everything else that goes on with you know Sao Paulo. I know there's a, a lot of security details that they're expanding. I'm talking about specifically Eagles-Packers, a marquee matchup that is not being taken place in a packed home field of Lincoln Financial Field or if it was the reverse situation at Lambeau Field. That's something that bothers me. Uh, what's your opinion on it? My, so uh, maybe it, it can help this team a little bit, um, especially with the expectations. If, if they don't, if they have a slow first half, right? There's no added pressure um, from, from the experience of PTSD of what we experienced last year, right? Carrying over on every single possession as fans, right? I, I, The one thing I'm going to be watching this whole game, especially in the first half, is how often do the Packers blitz and do the Eagles handle that? You know, how much motion are we going to see compared to seeing nothing at all now in Kellen Moore's offense? What do they decide to do in third and short? Do they hand the ball off to a guy, Saquon Barkley, who you can make a case could be uh, the next Christian McCaffrey if he's used uh, effectively in this offense? Uh, does Jalen knee look okay? Can he make, uh, you know, a couple plays with his feet to extend plays and then throw? I- I'm curious about how does Cam Jurgens handle the center position without Kelsey there? Those are the, those are the things I can't wait to see. And then on the other side, are you getting pressure from Jalen Carter up the gut and Jordan Davis? And, uh, you know, how is Bryce Huff handling the outside? And can you cover? Can you cover on the outside when you talk about Three legit, even potentially four wide receiver sets that the Packers run, and all four of those guys can catch. So I, I'm, I, I will be very curious about all the holes that that we addressed. I think that how we actually faced head on, did they answer them, especially out the gate against the Packer team that's going to be really good. If you wake up on Saturday morning and I text you and I say, "What are you most excited about that you saw?" Would it be? The offense just taking the lid off the Packers' defense and putting up 37? Or would it be that the defense did a a job that maybe we didn't expect to see? For the long-term view of this season, what would make you feel better Saturday morning? John, I know where you're getting at. And I I know I think long-term defense would be the big thing. To me, it's offense out the gate. The offense can can cover a lot of holes in the defense as they figure it out, especially with two young guys in that secondary, right? So to me, is is the offense gelling? Because there should be no excuse with this offense when you look at the veterans. They're not bringing in anybody new. Uh, You've got phenomenal wide receivers. I'd love to see them throw the ball across the middle, something we didn't see a lot last year with Goddard. And I want to see how Saquon has to have 25 touches. And if that's like potentially 19 carries, 20 carries, and five catches, great. He's got to have a minimum of 25 touches in this offense, and I want to see that. I would be most excited if they open up the, you know, blew open the lid here, like you just mentioned on offense, and they scored 35 points, and suddenly you're like, okay, Kellen Moore's offense it is much better than what we experienced last year. We got a comfortable quarterback, and we're utilizing all the weapons. Kevin, last thing before we let you go, obviously we're very Eagles-focused here in Philadelphia, but the league starts tonight between the Ravens and the Chiefs. We just are so fired up that football is back. We're going to get into this later on the show, but I want you to be the guinea pig, Kev. What is the storyline that you'll be paying attention to the most throughout the season that we might even see on the 6 o'clock Sports Center on a nightly basis? What storyline intrigues you the most? Wow, so are we talking national storyline? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Outside, of, outside of the Eagles. Um, 
Obviously, I think it's Kansas City in three-peating. Is, that's a big deal. Uh, I'm curious about the Ravens and how they use Derrick Henry. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, I mean, I can't escape it. I, I'm really curious about what we're going to see with the Cowboys. Uh, it's not an obsession that I have. It's just that they You're are not allowed. Yeah, you have to and, face it every night. And, and listen, uh, because Jerry's found a way to make sure no matter what, they're in the the headlines yep. because the quarterback dealing with a, uh, the final year of his contract is the biggest contract in NFL history, but the next year. And and who are they going to throw the ball to outside of C. D. Lamb and Jake Ferguson? Uh, and they they don't have they don't have consistent running backs. So I'm I'm really curious to see what this team looks like uh, long term because we're not going to escape that storyline. It's going to be a major on surrounding Dak's future. Kevin, you're the Good man. Job, Kev. I just want you to know, uh, despite last week's conversation, I am still talking to you wearing cherry and white. Um, As you should. <laughs> Good, he should. I am. Too. I am. There we were some people this weekend. Yeah, damn we right, man. One, one and one this week. It starts this week, and the real start. They, last week was week zero for Temple. Uh, week Absolutely. one, week one's this week. Kevin, we appreciate yeah. it, man. Thank you, buddy. That was be good, man. Go birds. Go birds. Go there birds. is Kevin the Gandhi from ESPN. Yeah, fifty-one. What happened?